friends. So, these days we are uh, discussing about experimental part of uh, air quality monitoring. As you recall, last time we discussed about sampling and analysis of PM10 particles, the size of the particles 10 micrometer or less than that. So, today we will discuss about sampling and analysis of PM2.5 in ambient air, means the particles of the size equal to or less than 2.5 micrometer. So, it is more or less similar uh, the way we monitor or uh, you know do sampling of PM10, but let us uh, discuss it separately so that we can know certain differences are there in the instrumentation basically. So, first of all uh, we will discuss the background like introduction and then we will look into the standards which are prescribed by uh, CPCB regarding PM2.5 and the principle of the sampling method of this particular particulate matter and the apparatus and materials which are used then what is the procedure of sampling and how do we calculate uh, you know the concentration ambient air concentration of PM2.5 after observation is made. So, then we will look into the summary of the flow chart of the procedure then uh, we will have a short video which will explain uh, the procedure of uh, PM2.5 monitoring right and then we will conclude. So, as we discussed last time also that fine particles have tendency to go into uh, you know our respiratory system. So, PM 2.5 basically these are very fine particles of this size let us say this 2.1 micrometer these secondary. So, this can go up to this part of uh, you know lungs they can uh, do damages to these parts of the lungs basically. So, they may have irritating kind of behavior as well as they can uh, kind of uh, hamper the, the function of the lungs you can say. Well, so guidelines for determination of PM 2.5 in ambient air is basically the gravimetric method which are taken from CPCB's manual on uh, guidelines for the measurement of ambient air pollution which uh, has all you know particulate matter as well as gases pollutants. Okay. So, the PM 2.5 sampling and analysis method which we are describing in this particular lecture is basically based on uh, the information which we have derived from this particular document. Okay. Now, if we talk about national ambient air quality standards that is NAAQS for PM 2.5 which has been prescribed by uh, CPCB Central Pollution Control Board. So, this is like for industrial, residential and rural and other areas it is around 40 to 60, 40 for annual uh, average and 24 hours average is 60 micro gram per cubic meter. The same uh, you know quantities are there for ecologically sensitive areas also which are notified by central uh, government. Well, so what is the principle behind this sampling of PM 2.5? It basically draws uh, you know the air ambient air uh, at a constant volumetric flow rate around uh, you know this 16.7 liter per minute or 0 0.0167 cubic meter per minute which is maintained uh, by a volumetric flow controller. Uh, which is coupled uh, to a you know microprocessor into uh, specially designed this inertial particle size separator which is also known as impactor okay where this suspended particulate matters in the pm size ranges uh, which are separated for 2.5 for collection on a uh, particular uh, filter paper which is of uh, 47 mm uh, this uh, pp uh, ptfe filter paper which is known as over a specified sampling period so that we know how much air has been passed through that filter papers because we will uh, you know require the volume of the air for calculation purpose of the concentration because we will uh, calculate the mass which is deposited on the filter paper and then if we know how much air has passed through this uh, filter paper that means what was the volume of air that has uh, that had this uh, particular amount of particulate matter. Right. Then each filter paper is basically uh, you know weighed before and after the sampling uh, collection is done. So, that we can know the difference of the particulate matter uh, after the final weight and before uh, you know sampling. So, that the difference of the weight is the particulate matter which is collected on the filter paper. Okay. Then uh, this is the apparatus basically. So, inlet is there and then PM10 impactor is there. So, that uh, uh, you know the coarse particles are removed and PM10 is only uh, collected 
here, but then it passes through at the lower place. So, at this particular uh, location, this PM 2.5 is collected on a, a small uh, filter paper. So, that means, uh, you know, PM 2.5 to PM 10 is collected in this particular portion. So, if we are interested to know how much uh, particles are there in the ambient air of the size which is uh, more than or larger than PM 2.5, but less than or smaller than uh, PM 10, then we can also get this value here. But we are interested especially in PM 2.5. So, uh, uh, you know the collected uh, particulate matter on this filter paper is of our interest basically. So, uh, you know different uh, kind of devices uh, in addition to this particular uh, apparatus we need like weighing machine, electronic micro balance and then filter paper is also needed, stop wash so that we know how much period is there because we have to uh, maintain the flow rate also, uh, how much time uh, we are doing sampling like 4 hours or how many hours, then filter paper supporting cassettes are there so that it is not disturbed, it has to be protected from other kind of issues. Well, so this uh, weighing machine is used for uh, weighing the filter paper before uh, sampling and after the sampling basically. So, if we go to the sampling procedure, uh, we basically follow this particular uh, path that we first of all inspect the filter paper, so that it does not have any kind of holes other you know short circuit will be there, particles will not be deposited, but air will take the particles through the that uh, you know punctured filter paper. So, that kind of filter paper we do not need, if there are cracks or holes we should reject that filter paper, it should be completely intact. Okay. Then we have to note down the batch of the sampling and the log sheet where we mention every kind of information. right? Then we have to label the filter uh, paper, so that we know at which site it has been used, because each filter paper represents a unique uh, monitoring site basically. Then uh, you know we place them in a petri dish and uh, we also use it uh, with uh, you know some of these uh, forceps, yeah forceps, so that uh, you do not touch it and you do not uh, uh, you know interfere in the way or uh, you do not put some particles if they are in the hands. Okay. Then we prepare this uh, uh, filter paper after conditioning, because conditioning is needed so that any kind of moisture can be removed from the filter paper, otherwise it can interfere in the collection of the particles as well as you know calculations. So, uh, you can condition it at a particular temperature. And then after conditioning, you have to weigh it and note down the weight that is the weight of the filter paper before sampling. Then we do uh, you know the sampling and after uh, this is exposed to the uh, you know particulate matter which is passing through that device uh, for a certain period, then we again uh, we weigh. So, that is the weight of final you know and initial we have weight just uh, before sampling and after sampling this final weight is there. So, difference of these is the basically mass of the 2.5 particles, particles of the size of 2.5 micrometer which is collected on the uh, this particular uh, filter paper. And uh, you know if this is in milligram then we multiply it by 10 to the power 3 to convert it into microgram. Then we divided this mass of microgram by this volume, volume of the total volume of the air which has been sampled, which is responsible for the collection of this particular amount of or uh, weight of or mass of uh, particulate matter. We need to do quality control, uh, some protocols are uh, you know followed like to prevent uh, uh, like we do maintenance of the equipment, calibration of the equipment time to time and other protocols we need to follow, so that quality is pro properly controlled. If we go for you know summary of you know flow chart uh, regarding measurements of PM 2.5, then first of all as I said let us check the filter paper for any physical damage. If there is any damage, reject it, get another fresh or new filter paper. And then uh, you know mark the identification number of the filter paper which represent a particular site of the monitoring. Then you need to condition it at the particular temperature for 24 hours, so that all uh, you know those moistures and uh, VOC related issues are removed. Then we record the initial weight after conditioning, please remember after conditioning we have to record the initial weight. Then we place this filter paper on the sampler, we run the sampler for uh, you know 8 hours or 4 hours depending upon the requirements. Then we record the flow rate on hourly basis, so that we can 
uh, if we, there is difference in the flow rate, then we can get the average value for that 4 hours or 8 hours. Then we remove the filter paper from the sampler and then uh, uh, we keep it in a particular container so that it is not disturbed and we take it to our laboratory and then uh, we record all the values of the flow rate as well as then again we condition the filter paper in a conditioning room for 24 hours and then we record the final weight. right? So, the difference of the final weight and initial weight gives the total mass which is collected and we know the volume of the air uh, by that flow rate and the time duration. So, we can divide it and calculate uh, for the concentration which is available or present in the ambient air. So, now uh, we present uh, you know a short video uh, which will illustrate you about the sampling procedure of PM 2.5 using this particular sampler of fine particulate collection. And this video has been prepared in the air pollution laboratory of civil engineering department of IIT Roorkee. Right? So, uh, please uh, watch this video and it will give you better perspective about the sampling of PM 2.5. Good morning friends, welcome to the experiments of uh, the subject air pollution and control. And uh, this is our second experiment where I will demonstrate you the purpose of the experiment is to measurement sampling and analysis of PM 2.5 in ambient air using gravimetric analysis. Like in previous experiment, we have learned about how the measurement of PM10 in ambient air is carried out. So, similarly, we also have a device to measure the PM2.5 concentration in ambient air and for that, the instrument that is used is called as fine particulate matter sampler of Envirotech called as APM550. Okay. So, initially, I will explain the different component of the instrument. So, uh, you can see this is the upper part of the instrument that is called as the inlet. And uh, after the inlet, uh, the, this part is called the impactor, which is uh, the PM10 uh, impactor to segregate the particles which are larger than 10 micron in size and those particles which are smaller than 10 micron will go through the air stream passing down and this is the down tube and this is the housing of the uh, APM550 uh, sampler. So, in the housing, we have the three major component. This is the winds impactor assembly and this is the uh, filter holder assembly and this is the dry gas meter. Okay. And uh, this other part that is the oil less vacuum pump. So, these are the major component of this instrument. So, what is the purpose of uh, different component I will explain. And uh, this is the inlet. So, through the inlet, this is the circular inlet basically. So, that like uh, the air which enters through this circular inlet, it will not affect the direction of the wind flow. Okay. So, that the air will enter through this uh, circular inlet and immediately this we are having this impactor. So, the purpose of this impactor is that those particles which are larger than 10 micron in size will be uh, trapped here and those particles which are less than or equal to 10 micron or PM10 we will say will pass through the instrument in the following air flow. So, this air will pass through this down tube okay, and then it will pass through this winds impactor. And here the purpose of this wind impactor is to trap the particles which are falling in the range of 2.5 to 10 micron in size. So, those particles which are less than or equal to 2.5 micron will pass through the air and pass through this wind impactor and then those, uh, those particles of 2 or we can say the PM 2.5 particles they will be collected here in this filter holder assembly. We have a filter cover. So, in which we have the PTFE filter, I will explain in the separate part. So, uh, those particles will be collected over this filter. Okay. So, what basically happens from the ambient air, the particles which are larger than 10 micron, they will be trapped here and those particles which are in the range of 2.5 to 10 micron, they will be trapped in winds impactor. So, only the air which is crossing this winds impactor will be having the uh, concentration of particles less than or equal to 2.5 micron and that will be collected over this in the filter which is uh, holded by this filter holder assembly. Okay. So, now the other part is like dry gas air meter. So, you can see here we can directly measure the volume of air through this meter. So, we do not have to uh, calculate the flow rate multiplied by time things like that directly we can get the volume of the air and the point is like how we create the suction in the instrument. So, in order to create the suction we have the oil less vacuum pump. So, that should be attached with the uh, this uh, device. Okay. Generally, this device is placed over this oil less vacuum pump and it is hold through this, uh, this part. So, that like we can wherever we are moving, we can easily take entire as a single unit and place anywhere where we are doing the sampling. Okay. Now, the point is like 
what happens inside the winds impactor okay so in order to understand it i have just uh, another uh, unit of winds impactor so this is the winds impactor we have and uh, here we have uh, the ptfe filter which is 47 mm size and we have a gfa filter a glass uh, microfiber filter that is for the impaction purpose okay so i will explain this so this is our winds impactor so we have to gently open it when we are setting the instrument so you can see here in this uh, impactor uh, assembly we have this part that is called as a oil well okay and in oil well we have to remove this upper part of this oil well and here inside you can see we have one filter that is the 37 mm gfa filter okay and before starting the instrument or before starting our experiment we have to place this gfa filter so we have um, we have already placed here and you can see here some wetness is there that is because of we have added some drops of silicon oil so silicon oil we have placed into this that is the dropper so when we place the filter through the uh, forcep and then we uh, place this upper part of the oil well and then simply using this uh, uh, dropper we add the drops of the silicon oil on the filter so that it becomes wet and so that what happens when the air which is uh, coming down through the down tube it will impact here so those particles which are falling in the range of 2.5 to 10 micron they will stuck here and only uh, the air which is coming out having the particles less than or equal to 2.5 micron that will pass through the filter uh, assembly okay so we then we place here simply so that and then we cover it like this so now what happens what happens whatever air is coming from this lower part that will be having having the pm 2.5 micron particles now here we have a filter holder in which we have added the place the filter ptfe filter which is 47 mm in size okay in diameter okay so this is the filter uh, holder and we place this filter here and then we put this cover like this okay so the air which comes out from here that will pass through this and whatever the mass of the pm 2.5 will be collected on this filter and this filter is basically placed in the filter holder assembly like you can see here we have already placed this so we have to open it and then we have to place it so until now i have explained you the different component of the device and how the air comes into it and then it pass through the filter and the pm 2.5 particle is collected on the filter the advantage this instrument is having that like if we want to suppose measure the pm 10 only then we can simply take out this winds impactor assembly and we can directly allow this air through this down tube to pass to the this filter here that time we have to replace this filter from the glass fiber filter okay so that we can measure the pm 10 also so this is how the 10 and 2.5 is measured through the pm 2.5 now the, we come to the calculation part so the calculation is very similar with the calculation of uh, the pm 10 as we have seen our previous experiment so i have explained here you can see uh, this upper equation is giving the mass of the uh, uh, pm 2.5 particles which are collected over this filter okay so what we have to do uh, we have to uh, do the pre conditioning and post conditioning uh, for the filter which we are going to use for measurement of pm 2.5 and after doing this pre conditioning we take the weight of the filter and that is called as the initial weight of the filter and after doing the sampling we again take the filter weight that is the following this post conditioning which we have done uh, similar to the pre conditioning okay so after doing this conditioning we take the post weight of the filter and the difference of these two will be placed in this equation and then we get the mass of the pm 2.5 now we need to have the volume and as i said like volume we can directly measure through this dry gas meter okay so this reading is directly giving you the volume in meter cube so we can simply place use this second equation and we can calculate the pm 2.5 concentration in the ambient air so this is how uh, using this winds impactor and this assembly we are able to measure the pm 2.5 in the ambient air thank you well so uh, you have seen this video and uh, we can conclude at last that the main objective of uh, you know ambient air particulate uh, sampling whether pm 10 or pm 2.5 here we have done this pm 2.5 sampling related description we have to do because we need the data to compare with the ambient air quality standards and whether it is exceeding or not 
and if it is exceeding then how to control it, how to remove reduce the concentration so that we can target certain sources like through source apportionment studies etcetera. So, for various purposes we need to monitor the air quality and uh, different kind of pollutants. So, PM 2.5 is uh, the part of this particular illustration and this data is useful for uh, all kind of uh, you know calculations like health effects or whether uh, you know uh, this uh, air quality standards are being met or not. So, uh, we can uh, you know get this data at certain locations and use this particular instrument for sampling purpose and do calculations and compare with the air quality standards and know whether it is exceeding or not. And these are the references based on which we have prepared this presentation. So, thank you for your kind attention and uh, I will see you in the next lecture where we will look into how to monitor uh, sulphur dioxide and uh, you know nitrogen dioxide. Thanks again.